This is Twit. All right, so we are here at Adobe Max 2019, and the big news is not AI, it's not AR, it's iPad and Photoshop. And I have Miss Jenny Lyell here with this insane technology on an iPad. I wasn't a believer in it, but she's gonna prove me wrong and tell me this is the way to go for mobile photo editing. So let me see what you got here. First and foremost, yeah. why yeah. on an iPad? So there is a very clear why mm -hmm. on the iPad. So when we talk to customers, mm -hmm. Um, and we're always learning from them and understanding what they have as pain points, right? Right. Um, the number one thing they say as to why they're interested in this. So when the iPad Pro came out, mm -hmm. there were all these searches for Photoshop on the iPad. And we wanted to understand <laughs> who was searching for this People and why. People were looking for yeah. Oh, man. And the, it, it boils down to one thing, which is I want the freedom to work away from my desktop. Not that I want to throw it away, but I want that choice. Right. I want the choice because whether I'm at the desktop, it's a mental thing where mm -hmm. I'm always in production mode and I'm there nine to five right. and I just want to, you know, get away, take a break, be inspired. Mm -hmm. um, or it is that I'm a freelancer and I've got to jump on the train and uh, meet with my client and I have time to kill because I've got three hours. Mm -hmm. So there's multiple needs as to why people want it, but the it, it really was down to this choice of okay. being able to work from wherever they want to. And see, that's the problem that I had with it initially yeah. because when I think of on-the-go editing, I'm yeah. thinking of sliders yeah. and, and just sort of real simple user interface. Yeah. And quite frankly, yeah. Photoshop is not a simple user no, interface. There's a gazillion menu items yeah. with a gazillion submenus in those menus. So I never really think about it from a mobile standpoint. Yeah. I just sort of sit and dial in. But you yeah. were saying people really wanted this out there on a, on a mobile device. They do. They want the choice. And what we had to do, what our design team had to do, was really rethink what will the mobile experience look like? So okay. you said there's a gazillion drop downs with options and sub options and sub options. Right. Um, that doesn't really make sense here, nor do we want to just pour over the same exact UI. Okay. We want to use this as an opportunity to rethink yeah. its touch, it's a smaller screen. There may be, so when did you start using Photoshop? Oh man, it's, putting you on the spot. Oh man, how many years ago was that? Oh, that's a ways back. That's a ways okay. back. You know? So when you when you started, it was probably a bit simpler, right? Yeah. Yes and no. Yes okay. and no. There are less features. Right. right? It was a yeah. lot less, yeah. but it was still not necessarily um, built for the beginner. You know, yeah. Photoshop was yeah. an advanced tool. Yeah. You know. So for this, we also want. So we want this to be a solid companion for desktop. We, we know it doesn't have all the features. Like, we don't want to just pour all the features over. Right. But we also want, for that person who opens up Photoshop for the first time, right. to not be overwhelmed by thousands of drop-downs and options and sub-options. And so we've really taken this opportunity to think of, okay, how can we serve some of this up contextually? Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, if I... You mind if I take that out? No, no, no. Go right ahead. So here. if I started creating a selection here, okay. I've got this contextual bar of options that just show up. So if I was a new user and I created a selection, yeah. I wouldn't really know what to do next because now I'm punching right. what to do next. Right. But this gives me a top list of options that I could do with this selection. And so we're thinking through how can we serve up things contextually, not just for the new user, but for the existing one who doesn't want to go hunting mm -hmm. through the drop, drop down. They could just go come here, right? right. Um, so these are the things that we're thinking through as we're thinking through what is this mobile experience. Now, if you were to make that selection up in the upper left quadrant here, would you get the same interface with this pop-up? Okay, I was curious to see if that would stay out of the way. Because a lot of times you get all of these help dialogues and stuff in the, in the daggum way and you can't see yeah. What's behind well, if you do I want like to select that. something down here, you know, you can just move it down here. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. So, yeah, clearly Adobe yeah. thinks about these things. <laughs> We've got a great design team here. Yeah. And another example is, you know, we've got, this is what we call the detailed layers. There's not that many layers here, so you don't really right. see the impact. But um, you could just pinch and shrink it down. Oh, nice. So you could keep your eyes really on the canvas here. Nice. Yeah. Um, even things like layer properties. So this is the layer properties for this image layer here. Mm -hmm. But if uh, I add type, uh, and bring this down, uh, it changes uh, into a type layer property. Nice. So all of this is contextual as well. Very nice, yeah. very nice. And I see you have blend modes and things like that to consider as well. Yeah. Can you demo just adding an extra layer with playing around with blend modes, whether it's uh, just a new color fill layer or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Look at okay. this. Yeah. Just a couple of steps and I've got some oh, cool blood going on. Okay, so let's go back to your blend modes. So I can go over my blend modes and you could already see the different effects it has. So here I could say, let's try this out. Mm -hmm. So you could see um, yeah. Cycle to next yeah. blend mode, cycle to previous blend mode is shift equal Inside. or shift minus. So okay. here I, I could cycle through this oh, way with my nice. keyboard shortcut because I don't have all my blend modes right. memorized. And I just really <laughs> see everything on the canvas, right? So that's one of our design principles. Like Very nice. keep all the previews on the canvas here. Yeah. Very nice. Now, is Adobe looking to make this, you know, the power users tool on the go? So uh, you're saying Adobe is confident, hey, yeah. they can take this and not miss a beat from sitting at the keyboard and laptop or what have you. This is still the same prowess and pr process and power. Yeah. So let me talk a little bit more of the underlying thing that powers this. Okay. So we've got a shared code base between iPad and the desktop. Okay. This is the only mobile app that shares the same exact code base as Photoshop desktop. Man. So what that means is that anything that we have on desktop yeah. We could bring so, over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's managing the same managing the same code with two different types of architecture, or actually three because of Windows. Yeah, so so there's different levels, but at the really core compositing level, mm -hmm. it's the same. Nice. Um, so it's the same brushing engine, it's mm -hmm. the same compositing, it's the same blend mode engine. And what this means is that you will yeah, never have to worry about your document coming over yeah, here right. and having a different result yeah, so as right. okay. desktop. If you anything, can, the worst you'd have to deal so with is screen color color calibration is what you're saying. <laughs> that's, that's outstanding. That's yeah. outstanding. Oops. Oh, this is a double tap. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I can literally zoom in. Let's do this. To a pixel. Oh, yeah. And then... If I Camera raw support. Yes. Is that on this new version of Photoshop iPad version? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Well, why? Why didn't so, you put it in there? <laughs> so we have talked to photographers. We've begun talking to them. And the first thing that matters the most is just to simply get Lightroom okay. photo access. Okay. Um, to be able to composite with their Lightroom photos, <laughs> which yeah. makes a lot of sense. Now, when we go into the whole raw conversation, what gets interesting is people have very different ways um, of editing in raw. Some people say, I want to edit in Lightroom. Some people say, I want to edit in um, camera raw. Bridge. Yeah. yeah, camera raw. And some people are even saying, I don't know why you would put it here because I wouldn't edit it in here. I would just edit it in other places. So why would you bloat this? Okay. So there's varying All right. There's varying responses and workflows, and we really want to understand to see what's the best strategy to support Camera Raw as we think about this with Lightroom Mobile, mm -hmm. with just the whole ecosystem. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you showing me this first look of Photoshop on the iPad. That I, It still blows my mind that we have all of this technology right here in this tiny little package, and it's doing a great job. So 
thank you again for your time and I look forward to getting back to my hotel and actually downloading it for myself and getting to work. Yeah. Thank you again, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Okay.